And so, Lord God Almighty, we pray now that you give us understanding as we listen to your word. We ask that you teach us your word by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We continue with our teaching on the blessing set of the birth, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of God, having all power, authority, dominion over all creations of God in heaven and on earth. We have established that there are a set of guaranteed blessings for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we have grouped them into five headings. We said there are a total of 10 that we want to look at, and we are taking the first five in this month of October. And those five that we have grouped together, we have taken them in this series. Number one is the blessing of forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power and nature of sin. This is called sanctification. Number two is deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion over Satan, all his works and all his agents. Number three is the blessing of the Holy Spirit with his gifts, which we call the power of God, and his fruit, which we call the fruit of righteousness. And number four, is the blessing of healing, healing. And number five is the blessing of sonship. We have been adopted as sons and daughters of God. These are the five we are taking in this series in this month of October. So far, we have covered number one and number two. And today, we want to look quickly at number three, and number four, that is the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of healing. Praise the name of the Lord. Our anchor scripture has been Isaiah chapter 53, and we're going to read that same scripture now. Isaiah chapter 53, specifically verse 5, is where we will read now. And we will read a number of scriptures. So let's read Isaiah chapter 53. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Let that word sink in. Jesus Christ suffered all this. This word was fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross for all mankind. And so everyone who received Jesus, this word is fulfilled in his or her life. In fact, if you go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, there Peter confirmed this scripture and he used it in the past tense. He says, by whose stripes you were healed, confirming that this had already happened. So, brothers and sisters, through the birth, the death, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by his stripes, you and I have been given the blessing of healing. Divine health is your portion, is my portion. It is your right. Glory be to God. Let's read a few more scriptures. So we will take the discussion of these two themes, the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of healing together. Let's look at Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. There the Bible says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants, 
and on my maid servants. I will pour out my spirit in those days. Beloved brothers and sisters, this scripture also came to fulfillment. How do I know that? Go to Acts chapter 2, and you will see the confirmation of this scripture. In Acts chapter 2, if we read it from verse 1, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Three, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Ghost came down on the day that we often refer to as the day of Pentecost. But he didn't stop there. If you jump with me to verse 14, you will see the confirmation of that prophecy that was in the book of Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. We we'll read from verse 14. It says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Verse 15, For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Let me pause there and make a point here. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Spirit of God, and begins to manifest in diverse ways, sometimes people will think you are a fool. Sometimes people will think you are mad. Sometimes people will mock you like they did here. In fact, in verse 13 of this scripture, the Bible says there that others mocking said they are full of new wine. That is why Peter answered them here. But I know that if you are moved by the Holy Ghost, if you are moved by the Spirit of God, no matter what men may say, at the end of it, God will be glorified. And I decree over your life right now, by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that Spirit of God that quickened Jesus Christ and raised him up from the dead, let that power rest upon you and make your life align with the purpose and the glory of God. The Spirit of the Lord move you now. Move you now. Move you into God's will. Move you into God's purpose for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's continue the reading. So they were not drunk. Peter told them. It says in verse 16. He said, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. The prophet Joel that we just read. He said, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, says God that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. It is your right to receive the Holy Spirit because God promised that in these days, these latter days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And since that day, he is here. He has not gone back. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We continue to read in verse 18. He says, and on my main servants, and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. It is your right by the Holy Spirit to dream dreams, to see visions, and to prophesy. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. This is what the Holy Spirit does when he comes and abides in us. Thank you, almighty God. Glory be to your holy name. So this prophecy has been fulfilled. And so you and I who believe in Jesus Christ, we have received the Holy Spirit. You just need to be conscious of it. And if you have not experienced the manifestation, I am trusting God that in this service right now, there will be a reenactment of what happened in Acts chapter 10 in the household of Cornelius. The Bible says that, that while Peter was yet speaking, 
the Holy Ghost fell upon the entire household of Cornelius. And they began to speak in tongues. And so I release that Holy Spirit grace upon you right now. If you believe in Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit of God. Receive that grace now. Receive that power now. And let there be a manifestation upon you, even as we are going on in this teaching. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, my Lord and my God. So, we continue in that Acts chapter 2. And you would see as Peter continued to speak to the Jews, he got to verse 36 and the people asked him. Let me just take verse 37. Verse 37, he said, Now, when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? Are you one of those who is asking? I have been hearing of this Holy Spirit. I have not had experience of him. What shall I do? Today is your day. Today God is giving you the coat. Is revealing it. Is breaking open the coat for you. Receive that coat today and move and live in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. So in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Peter answered. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here, verse 39, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Everyone God has called to you and your children is the promise, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the requirement? You can see the requirements are stated there. Requirement to receive the Holy Spirit, verse 38, makes it clear. And you can look at it again. What does verse 38 say? It says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. So if you have repented, and you have received Jesus. I encourage you, please go ahead and receive baptism, water baptism, by immersion. However, that is not a delay. In the household of Cornelius, while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on them. They were not baptized yet by water, but they received the Holy Spirit before they were baptized by water. Hallelujah. But after they received the Holy Spirit, they did go on and got baptized by immersion. So I want to encourage everyone hearing me today as you are receiving the Holy Spirit in this meeting because there is a guarantee that this blessing is yours. If you have received Jesus Christ, if you have repented of your sin, ask God right now. Give me your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, is coming upon you, is coming upon you with clear evidence and manifestation. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, and after this meeting, make sure, go and get water baptism. Let us continue with the requirement and see what the Bible says in John chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. John chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. There the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So you see what is required there, you love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Do you keep the commandments of Jesus? If you do that, hear what verse 16 says. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. I will pray the Father, that he may give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. So the Holy Spirit is our helper. Hallelujah. Why the Holy Spirit? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? He is the one who helps us in everywhere, in everything. Without the Holy Spirit, nobody can claim to be a Christian. Nobody can claim to be like Christ. Nobody will be able to do and fulfill the purpose of God. In fact, nobody will qualify to be in the presence of God. It's only by the Spirit of God, the Spirit grace that he has given to us. It is the Holy Spirit that manifests the power of God in us. It is the Holy Spirit that 
manifest the fruit, the righteousness of God in us. It is by the Holy Spirit that we become sons and daughters of God. So in this, that same John chapter 14 that we read, if you go to verse 26, you see there, the Bible says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Oh, brothers and sisters, without the Holy Spirit, all your works, all your service is a religion. It is just activities in the flesh. It is by the Holy Spirit, and you need the Holy Spirit to be able to do exploit. Thank you, Almighty God. So the Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us in every area, in all aspects of this journey with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God. He is the one who ministers Jesus Christ through us and also ministers Jesus Christ from us to others. He ministers to us and ministers through us to others. Hallelujah. And one of the ministration that the Holy Spirit ministers through us is healing. Hallelujah. Is healing. So we go straight into healing. You have been hearing the coinage. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. How did that come about? Oh, you will see in Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 to 28. A woman of Canaan came in that place and, he, and she asked Jesus to heal her daughter. Her daughter was vexed of demons. So she asked Jesus to heal her daughter. And Jesus said that it is not right to take the bread that belongs to the children and cast it to the little dogs. <laughs> and you know the story, and the woman persevered. Let me read that story quickly because there's a whole lot of lessons to learn there. But before I read that, I just put a pause. Remember, we came from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. There, the last line says, by his stripes, you are healed. You are healed. Never you forget that. You are healed. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 confirms it and says, you were healed. So you were healed when Jesus died on the cross, and you are healed right now, and you remain healed all the days of your life. I decree that be your portion. I decree that be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So I read the story in Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 down. It says, and behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. 23, but he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. 24, but he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. There is a whole lot for us to learn from this scripture. Oh, thank you, my father. Thank you, our God. You see, in this scripture here, many times when people read it, they will put themselves in the place of that woman. That's okay, because she demonstrated faith. At least that's the only thing that has relationship between us and that woman. You know why? Because that woman was not a child of God. She was not. She didn't qualify in the place of sonship. But through Jesus Christ, you and I have become sons and daughters of God. And so we belong to the group that Jesus said the bread was meant for. That is where the word healing is the children's bread is coined from. 
So you look at it there in verse 26. It says, but he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. But the woman persevered by faith. And Jesus healed her daughter. Healing is your portion. You are a child of God. You are like Jesus Christ. You are a Christian. One that is like Christ. Just like Christ. By the Holy Spirit that we have just received. As we have been taught. And so healing is the children's bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we touch on healing. How do we receive healing? Number one, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, which we have read. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5d, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Number two, we receive healing through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Healing is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And these are in two folds. We will see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, from verse 7 to 11, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which I often refer to as the power of God. However, if you're conscious of the Spirit that dwells in you, the Spirit himself in you transforms your body. Romans chapter 8, verse 11, write it down and note it there. It says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is able to give life to your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. So the Holy Spirit in you is able to renew you, refresh you, make you live and not fall sick at all. In the same Romans chapter 8, Verses 1 and 2, you will see that the Bible says that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. When he dwells in you, sickness runs away. If you're conscious of him who dwells in you, if you're conscious of the power of God that dwells in you, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, my Lord and my God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We are like Jesus Christ in that story that we read in Matthew chapter 15 verse, from verse 22. Not like the woman, we are like Jesus. We have been made like him. Oh, thank you, my father. In same Romans chapter 8 verse 29, it says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Can you hear that? Image of his son, we have been made like him. The same Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is a very rich scripture. Hallelujah. You know what Romans chapter 8, verse 15 says? We have received the Holy Spirit, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And he goes on to say that we have become sons and Daughters of God. Hallelujah. And through that spirit, we have become heirs of God and joined heirs with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm paraphrasing there. So we receive healing through the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Also, by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as I said, this has two parts. By the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can minister healing to another person, and to ourselves. Don't let anybody deceive you that you cannot heal. You can heal. That's what Jesus Christ asks us to do. So you see this in 1 Corinthians that I talked about, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 7 to 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings. Did you see that? Gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Eleven, 
but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So you see the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the gifts of healings. In addition, you have all the other nine gifts. You have all the other gifts. There are nine gifts listed here. But as I told you, beyond these nine gifts, the Holy Spirit is that spirit of life, eternal life that dwells in you. And so you have even greater blessings than just these nine gifts. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ also in the book of Mark is a familiar scripture, chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Now read this one with me. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Brothers and sisters, this is your portion in the name of Jesus. So number three way that we receive healing is by faith in the word of God. Faith in the word of God. Of course, you saw that woman demonstrated faith there and received healing for her daughter. Thank you, almighty God. So let's just make mention uh, of important thing uh, that sickness and diseases are caused by number one, the devil, number two, stress, Number three, deficiency. Deficiency of um, vital things in your body. And you can add number four, wear and tear. Your body, as you grow older, use and all that. That's why you have to use your body very well. You have to take care of your body. However, brothers and sisters, it does not matter what causes sickness. I do encourage you, please take care of your body very well. Reduce stress. Take the necessary ingredient in your body. Do your necessary uh, checkups and all that. However, know this. No matter what causes sickness, Jesus Christ is your healer. The Almighty God has already given you the blessing of healing. And by the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, you can live transformed life and live in divine health. Enjoy that eternal life that has been given to you all the days of your life without even falling sick at all. Let's look at a few scriptures and then we will pray because this is a teaching that requires some practical demonstration. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you are healed. I said we receive healing by the stripes of Jesus, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, both ministering the gifts that we have received and by the Spirit that dwells in us. And number three, I say by faith in the Word of God. Faith in the Word of God. So you need to know the Word that speaks of your healing. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, there the Bible says clearly, God declares, I am the Lord that healeth thee. In Psalm 107 verse 20, the scripture clearly says there, he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. So right now, we want to demonstrate the healing by the spirit of God that we have received. And so open your Bible with me to Acts chapter 3. And there you see the example how Peter, James, and John, who were just starting after receiving the Holy Spirit like you and I have received the Holy Spirit now, because the Holy Spirit of God is here. As I told you, since the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, as we read, the fulfillment of the prophecy that Joel prophesied in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, that Holy Spirit has remained here with us. Just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in that John chapter 14, verses 15 and 16, he said, I will pray the Father and he will send you another helper, another comforter, and he will be with you. 
and in verse 26 and 27, he says that the Holy Spirit is our helper. That Holy Spirit is here to help us. And so in Acts chapter 3, you, you know what happened there? The Bible records that Peter, James, and John, they saw a crippled man who sought at the beautiful gate, the gate that is called beautiful. And he was asking alms of them. Verse 4 of Acts chapter 3. He said, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. What did Peter have? He had the Holy Ghost. He had Jesus in him. Hallelujah. I have the Holy Ghost. I have Jesus in me. And so Peter said, but what I have, what I do have, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, that I do have, the name of Jesus that is in me, that is with me, that I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And so I decree over you, the sick person upon this platform. Oh, you that woman that have been having pr problem in your stomach. It has been like stone in your stomach, fibroid in the stomach. Silver and gold, I have none. But what I do have, the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in me, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, fibroid, come out of her. Die, dry up, and you be healed in the name of Jesus. You child that has been sick, that have lost your voice, that have been paralyzed, that cannot walk, that cannot talk. I cast out the demon that afflicted you, that has oppressed your life. And I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Silver and gold I do not have, Peter said. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Hey, so he... Leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, praising God. Let me round off here. How do you do it? Because I want you to demonstrate it now where you are. How do you do it? The scriptures we have read has taught us everything we need to do. So let me summarize. You heal the sick. Number one, in the name of Jesus. It is by the name of Jesus. So you lay hands on the forehead of the person that is sick and heal him in the name of Jesus. So I just mentioned the points I wrote down and you can modify it and the spirit will help you. So just like Peter did here, they received the Holy Spirit just like you and I have received the Holy Spirit and they put it into practice and you saw it worked. Let me also make the point, it's not every time that you lay hands. You saw the example of Jesus Christ. He didn't go anywhere. In fact, if you read Matthew chapter 8, the centurion story. Even the centurion said, Lord, don't bother coming to my house. Speak the word. Just speak the word. And Jesus, again, just like he said to that woman in that portion that we read, Matthew chapter 15. He said, be it to you according to your faith. And you remember Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20 that we read. It says he sent forth his word and his word healed them. So it is the word of God that you use to heal by faith. The word of God that you use to heal by faith. So you can heal by faith. You can heal by laying your hands and decreeing healing 
in the name of Jesus. So note this point then. Put your hands on the forehead of the person if you can physically reach that person. And then speak over that person like Peter with John did. And say, in the name of Jesus, be healed of all sickness and diseases. Why you do this is because sometimes you may not know what is the problem. And the person may not even know what is the problem. So cover every aspect. Put your hand on the forehead of that person. And, and right now, I want you to do it. If there is a sick person near you or you are sick, put your hand on the forehead of that person. It's demonstration time now. And say with me, in the name of Jesus, be healed of all sickness and diseases. Number two, say, I take authority over the devil and I terminate all oppression of the devil over your body. You devil, come out and stop your oppression now in this body, in that body, in the name of Jesus. Number three, declare, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. And so I declare you healed. And so I declare myself healed. I declare my body healed and made whole. If you know any particular part of your body that is hurting right now, declare that part of the body healed. Why is you putting your hand on your head, forehead? Heal. Go ahead and declare that healing. I declare the healing of Jesus upon you. By the stripes of Jesus, I declare you healed. I declare that your stomach healed. I declare that your womb that has been blocked healed. I declare that your head healed. I declare that your ear healed. I declare that your hand that has withered healed. I declare every wound in your body to be healed now. I command the surgical operation by the Holy Spirit to perform in your body right now. By the stripes of Jesus, be healed. I declare you whole in the name of Jesus. Number four and final one. Because you have cast out demons, you will now fill the person with the Holy Spirit. If the person has not given his life to Jesus Christ before, you now lead the person to Jesus Christ. Let me make the point here. At times people say, oh, um, you have to repent first before you receive healing. No, no, Jesus, he heals. He heals anybody. He heals everybody. Of course, Peter, James, and John demonstrated here. You can see they didn't ask the man repent. They healed him. But it's very important that whether you start from asking people to repent, it's also good if you're asking people to repent if they have sinned. Jesus also did that with the man that was suffering from the palsy. Jesus said, your sins be forgiven you. And then he told him, carry your bed and go. So either way works. So if you have, uh, uh, the person has not given his life to Jesus, it's very important. The reason you do this is so the person can maintain the healing because he needs the spirit. Otherwise, if it was a demon that afflicted that person, that demon will come back and the person will not be able to stand. That's why it's very important. You must seal that life. With the Holy Spirit. So, number four, pray with me. And say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Your body, soul, and spirit, I commit to the Holy Spirit. Father God in heaven, fill this man now. Fill this child now. Fill this woman now with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father God in heaven, fill me now. My Father, I ask, fill me now. Feel this, your children now. Feel everyone upon this platform now with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, go ahead and pray with me now. Still putting your hand upon your forehead and say, Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. Forgive me all my sins. Give me the Holy Spirit and the power to overcome sin. 
Father God, destroy the nature and power of sin in my life. Wash me now with the precious blood of Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is my Lord. From now on, for the rest of my life, I will live for you, O God. I will serve Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God, for healing my body. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit. I am a child of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in me. I have the power of God. I have received the healing of God. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And when you have done this, you've seen what the lame man that was healed. The lame, he jumped and he joined them and entered the temple. So you come and testify. You come and testify to what God has done. And you come to God. You don't take and go away and, uh, and run yourself into trouble, more trouble again. No, you come to testify that Jesus has healed you, not to any man. Hear me and hear me. No man has the power to heal anybody. You have heard me. It is the Spirit of God, the power of God in us by the name of Jesus and the Word of God. You heard in Psalm 107 verse 20, He sent His Word and His Word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. I declare that healing be upon you all, be upon me, be upon us. Receive the divine health now and throughout your life on earth, remain whole, and by the Spirit of God, serve God and do the will of God. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.